Hello, friends, and welcome back to another episode. So in this episode, let's talk about Jonathan Higby, the street photographer who's made his claim to fame by uh, coincidences, right? He's supposed to photograph all these coincidences and all these spontaneous moments with these uh, extreme variables that just somehow these variables line up and he's there to catch this, okay? So I'm going to roll in a lot of images, right? We're going to cover about 10, 10, 11, something like that. But I'm going to roll in about 10 images, and we'll discuss them one by one. But I want to set up, this is important to set up the intro. So the two schools of thought out there on the Internet right now, the discussion, it's kind of binary. Either they are truly spontaneous shots or they're truly coincidences. And the other the other school is that they're staged, His, his shots are staged. And I don't think it's that simple. I don't think it's that clear. I've studied these photos quite a bit. And it appears to me instead of two categories, there are really four. There are four things going on right now in his images, right? Four categories. So let's talk about them, right? So this first, and forgive my crude drawings. These are very elementary drawings, right? But what I have here is like a, a plume of smoke in a person, right? So, so let's talk about his first category, how I think he's getting these shots. So the first category is you have two, two disparate objects, right? Two dif disparate subjects. And what he does is he moves around. He literally sees these two objects with his, with his eyes. And then he says, how can I position myself to make this a photo, right? So he literally, he literally studies these and says, what is the azimuth or vector I need to be on to make this work? And he just moves to that position. So let's say he moves, he moves and he's lines, he lines these up. And then he, maybe he has to crouch or do something, right, in elevation until they come together, right? So again, it's not, but my criticism of that particular style is it's not spontaneous. That's not a coincidence. It's not spontaneous. So if you literally have to move yourself and position yourself to, to get that vector or azimuth to get the shot, then it's not a spontaneous shot. It's not a coincidental shot. So let's talk about two, style number two. He sees this. He'll see like steam coming from some type of pipe or whatever, right? But it doesn't have to be steam. It can be anything, right? He sees a subject and he thinks, well, wouldn't this be great if I could get this somehow to, to right, as a point counterpoint for a photo? So let's say here's a person walking. He sees the steam. Now his second style is, is burst, burst rate, right? He just lays on the shutter and fills the buffer. So here's a person. Click, 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 click. Okay, he lays on the shutter. Then afterward, he goes into his images and he finds the image that looks like this okay so he doesn't want to use this one and he doesn't want to use this one he'll use that one again if you lay on the buffer like that it's not a spontaneous image and it's not coincidental it's it's you're relying on your camera's buffer to get the shot right so that mo that that moment of serendipity is lost so that's his second style so we've covered two styles where neither are spontaneous or coincidental the third one is staged so let's say he sees this and he just asked somebody, he just asked somebody on the street, excuse me, can, can you pose for me? I would really like to get this shot, and here's how I need you to stand, and this is what I need you to do. And I'll show you some images later that really look staged. I cannot believe in, in, in any realm of possibility that this was a spontane these were spontaneous shots. But so he'll ask somebody, hey, can you stand like this? Okay, and boom, he gets the shot. So that's style number three. It's not coincidental, and it's not spontaneous. It's not serendipitous. So three out of three are not spontaneous or coincidental. And the fourth, the fourth category I truly believe is coincidental. But I only found one image. I went through 40 images at his website and I only found one that I really feel qualifies as a serendipitous or coincidental image. And we'll, we'll, I'll show you that one. But we're going to go through, we're going to go through a few here. We're going to go through about 10 images. But again, showing you his images, uh, I'm, I'm, ex I'm uh, claiming fair use here, right? Fair use for scholarly activities, right? Scholarly study, academic study. So we're going to look at his images and we're going to discuss them in a scholarly fashion. Uh, and I'm sorry about this changing light. As a matter of fact, let me turn off my television. I've got uh, Turner Classic Movies on and it's messing up the exposure on my face. Okay, so, so uh, without further ado, uh, and again, I'm not trying to uh, hang him out to dry, right? I don't have any horse in this race. But after examining his images, I do have a problem with this whole spontaneous thing and this whole uh, coincidental thing. Because, like I say, there's four general categories his images fall in, and three of them are not spontaneous or, or serendipitous. Okay, so let's examine the images one by one. 
Okay, in this image, you can tell he's squatted or crouched down. He's at about, you can tell the axis of the lens is at about three feet off the ground, three and a half feet. So it's clearly he's manipulated his position to get this proper axis of the photo. Another photo where he's manipulated his position in order to get this perspective. This is another one where all he had to do was move until he got this axis correct, right? The axis of the torso running through down through the hips and into the legs. Here he had to move until he just found a, a good symmetrical point, right? So that it, one, it looks like the person is standing naturally, but with just two different legs. Okay, so this is the first image now where I think he's relying on the, just laying on the shutter, right, using burst mode. So he saw this father and son enter the frame, and then he just laid on the shutter, right, captured a whole bunch of frames and just went through afterward and found the frame that produced this. Same with this image. You can tell this Jewish man, he's on the phone, cell phone. He's walking left of frame to right of frame. There's a little movement there in the crease of his pants. And again, this is shut. It looks like he's just in burst mode. And he went and cherry picked the frame where it shows this plume of smoke, like his hat's on fire and the smoke is rising from his hat. Same with this image. He just, again, he's in burst and he just cherry picked the frame that produced this image. Same principle here, nothing different. Okay, this one's a tough call because if you look at the the color of the sweaters, right? This the woman in the in the advertisement and the actual person behind the sign, the colors are almost identical in the sweater. Uh, the the, the uh, elevation of the shoulder. Look at the collarbone or the tricep, how it's coming. Or not, I don't know quadricep, tricep. I don't know. I think it's quadricep. Anyway, the like the shoulder, the shoulder, it's coming out and it's almost on a perfect uh, perfect. Uh, elevation but the the thing is that that makes me kind of think maybe it's not stages you can tell the hand is a person of color and then the model in the in the in the advertisement is caucasian so if it's if it was going to be a truly staged shot you'd think he would choose a caucasian person caucasian woman but again this this one's a really tough call because you know that the the, the 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 sweater is a perfect match the elevation of the shoulder is perfect i mean how long would how long would higby have to stand there to get this shot i mean literally days i mean the, for these coincidences to take effect he would have to stand there for days for all these variables to come together i mean it's it's really quite overwhelming yeah i just can't buy this one the similarities are way too close this one is just absolutely unbelievable as far as I could stand. I could stand in that spot for 10 years and never have these variables come together like this. I'm sorry. It's just, I just, I cannot believe this is a coincidence. It just, I'm not buying it. And I believe this one is the worst defender of all of his images. This is, this is the most unbelievable. So he's standing there. There's a blue, like this blue triangle painted on the wall. And by chance, by some miracle, this person pulls out a camera. And it just so happens that the lens is right where the, the angle meets, right? Uh, no. Okay, so I think this the fourth and final category is true coincidence or spontaneity. If you notice this gentleman's shirt, I believe uh, he, Higby saw this, raised his camera, snapped it, because this is, I believe this is, right, the, his, his claim to fame, right, the spontaneity or coincidence, the shirt is in perfect synchronicity, kind of, you know, the, the, with the crosswalk, the style of the crosswalk, and I believe this is a home run. But one out of 40 meet the criteria, okay? So, again, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you had some fun with it. Again, I think, you know, I, I'm not making any character assassinations against Higby. I'm not saying he's a fraud. I'm just saying it, it, his images, the, the vast majority of images, I believe, I just believe they're contrived. You know, he's, like I say, he's positioning his body. He's he's using the buffer on the camera and so forth and so on. So, again, just, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Thanks for watching.